All right, so here we are in Asus uh, UEFI BIOS Utility. I've tried so many different iterations uh, of this tutorial. None of them were successful. This is the first time that I was able to get a stable clock speed for just normal use, not even just uh, to, to click on for ultra gaming or whatever. Like, I can keep this overclock consistent with low temps and, and all of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring you through what I did step by step. We'll go to the AI tweaker. I left almost everything the same. I did change the DDR to 1600 because I do have 1600 megahertz memory, but I kept wanting to read it as 1333, so I did set that automatically. Look at the rest of my settings. I won't, I won't talk about all of them, but I'll keep it on here long enough for you to see them. I did put it at 22.5 for the CPU ratio. I did go up higher at one point so that my um, target CPU speed was 4.8 and I was able to get it stable but it was also running extremely hot and I just kinda figured you know what I want something that's gonna be relatively cool but also have that above the 4.3 that the the um, easy BIOS part of it does before you switch to advanced you can get as high as 4.3 just by letting you know, ASUS automatically do it through this BIOS. Another thing is, is I was very fortunate to get this CPU and this motherboard because this motherboard is absolutely amazing for overclocking safely. Also, because if I were to do anything wrong, this thing's going to shut down on me. I have warnings and things like that, so this thing would shut down on me if uh, I go too too far. Um, so okay, as you can see right there, I'll, I'll scroll down a little bit more. Um, here we go. I left most everything the same. Now here's the the Digi VRM. This was also something that was kind of kind of messed up. There were so many different people that had different ways of doing this, and uh, I decided to go on ultra high for the load line calibration. Leave everything else at auto. Some people changed the uh, load uh, the CPU North Bridge load line calibration to high, but I just decided I was going to try to mix and match until I could get the, the best stable mode. And as you can see here are the rest of the things that I did. Let me move on a little bit. Now this is hard to see because of um, how dark that is. I don't know if I can get any, any, any closer. It's so yellow. Unfortunately I can't. But what I did was is I had initially set my target to 1.5 volts. That way I could get a stable clock with stable temperatures, and that's like the max you kind of want to go. Uh, that's, that's, that's a reasonable amount, is 1.5 to start with, and you want to work yourself way down until it becomes unstable. So if, if in other words, I got 1.5 going, and then when I went into um, Unigen, I ran it, it was running good, but the temps were super high. And you, you're just pushing more power, obviously pushing more power, you're going to push more heat. So I backed off to 1.5, well, I mean 1.45, and all of a sudden I was kind of getting skipping and jumping and it wasn't smooth, it wasn't a smooth experience. So finally I put it up to 1.47 and this seems to be the, the place where everything's going to stay stable for me in gameplay and in all my benchmarks. Again, this part right here with the CPU manual voltage, you got to switch the uh, CP, CPU NB voltage to the manual mode. And then when you go into the manual voltage, start off at 1.5. But if everything stays stable, then work your way down until it becomes unstable. Don't work your way up. Start at 1.5, that's pretty reasonable, and go, and go down. Now that's now that's centering around you doing your overclock to being 4.5 gigahertz like I did with mine. If you want to go uh, uh, 4.8, that's going to be around 1.49 volts, which is going to be your your typical stable point. But now that you're, I, I, we're doing this based off of my 4.5, so um, I was able to get it to about there. Everything else is set to auto. Again, sometimes manually setting stuff isn't as easy as they make it sound. And I would rather set the main things in the BIOS and then let this motherboard do the rest of it because this uh, Digi VRM is absolutely amazing uh, and an intelligent program. 
Okay, so let's go. I didn't touch anything else other than CPU configuration. And for cool and quiet, it's always disabled. And as you can see, the rest of them disabled, enabled, disabled, disabled, and auto. Here's another thing that I learned. And it caused me to have problems because what I have now is the um, Corsair H100i that uses the uh, Corsair link. Well, the way you set it up with the USB ports and everything, it causes a CPU fan error at the beginning when you're starting up and it asks you to press F1 to, uh, to straighten all that out every time you start it. Well, it's really not a problem. It's just that the Corsair program is taking control and not the motherboard. And So what you do is you go um, and disable your CPU Q fan control, disable that altogether because it's not going to make that much of a difference, especially if you're using the H100i. If you're not using H100i and you're you know using normal stock cooling, which I don't suggest with overclocking anyway, but let's just say that you are, you may not have to disable that, you may not want to, but if you're using um, any of the aftermarket cooling, liquid cooling or water cooling, especially like the H100i or um, I think Thermaltake has one that's like that too, just disable that and you should be able to run pretty well. Just for the heck of it, and this isn't really necessarily part of the overclocking section, but it's just what I did with this motherboard because it made sense, is uh, I disabled the full logo, dropped the post report to one second, disabled the wait for F1 era. Now, there, those might be useful in some ways, but all it does is slow down the ability to boot up, and even though I'm using an SSD and it boots up fast, it can't hurt anyway. Once you have all of those things set, you go into the ASUS OC profile, give it a name, mine was first, and then save it as a setup profile. So in case you run into any errors or anything like that or any problems, um, you can go back in and just load it up from that profile. You know, say you have to put everything back to defaults because something didn't work out right. Well, you can go back and load this profile and then tweak it again instead of having to set everything all over again. So that's basically what I have done, and if we, actually, hold on a second, let me, uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. I don't want to exit without saving. Okay, let me go into the uh, monitor. So as you can see, none of the CPU fan stuff is going to be available because I disabled the motherboard monitoring because I have that through all my uh, Corsair link program. It's showing you my voltage. Let's get back up here. Yeah. So my CPU temperatures. Now this is satisfactory for me. Now I didn't up my uh, Corsair H100i. I didn't. I didn't up the fan speed on that. So this is basically just stock to try to keep it as quiet as I can too, because I don't want it noisy. But this is an this is a a satisfactory operating temperature. 43 degrees isn't bad, and even under load it only gets to like 55, and that's with a 4.5 gigahertz clock speed. And in games like Battlefield and uh, Crisis, I actually saw a significant um, increase in frames per second. There are some games that rely more on the graphics, and you can overclock at that point your graphics, your GPU. This was just to get the most that I could get out of my CPU safely. And my motherboard temperature, all of this is pretty, is pretty well um, within operating limits. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to discard changes and go because I didn't really change anything I was just kind of messing around and what we'll do is we'll boot up Windows and hopefully it boots <laughs> that would really stink with this tutorial if it just decided not to boot okay there we go all right, so now that we're at the desktop, I'm going to boot up my hardware monitor and my CPU ID just to get from a desktop perspective how everything's running. Now again, I did use that Prime 95 CPU test and I did let it run for 10 minutes to see what my max load would be. 
and it was around 79 degrees. Now, I know that some people say that's not really good, but this was, this was under extreme amount of pressure. There's no game, there's no nothing I have played right now that has even got my temperatures to that point, that has even caused a problem. And in Unigen, I was getting really great frame rate. So, as you can see, let's uh, kind of get this a little bit clearer. As you can see, my temperature is 42. Everything's, everything's really stable. I'll probably post some other videos later of some gameplay with frames per second in Battlefield with and without the overclocking, just so you can see the, the bump that you get. But write, um, make sure that in your comments, if you have any questions, let me know. If, there, if I went too fast, I know I might have. I really wanted to post this because I've tried so many different ways and I wanted to just post something for you guys to um, be able to easily go in and do without any issues. So I hope you like this. If you did, just make some comments, hit the like button, subscribe, and let me know what else you'd like me to do next, either reviews or tech tips like this. And I will do the digging. I will do the research, the legwork for you, and uh, hopefully you enjoy it.